Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna paint this gouache landscape. And if you'd like a real-time version of this lesson, you can find it up now in Critique Club. I will have a link in the video description so you can check it out if you want to learn more. So I'm working from a photo that I took the other day. And here's a quick tip. Whenever you want to make sure that your paper is the same aspect ratio as your photo, just put it corner to corner, like nestle it up in the corner of your paper and use a straight edge to go through the corners and then wherever that straight edge hits the side of your paper that's where you want to crop it and that will give you a perfectly um uh perfectly ratioed paper to go with your photo you're trying to copy um and i don't know i don't know if it's all that important actually i probably could have used a little more space on the bottom because i tended to I don't know, stretch out the rock area a bit, but it's just a neat little trick to know. The paints I'm using are the Winsor Newton mixing set of gouache, the mixing set of six, and I thought I'd try that out since I bought that back on Black Friday to review, and I just hadn't gotten a chance to use it. And the palette is from Fran Nor Designs on Etsy, and I will link to all these things in the video description if you want to check any of them out. Now here, I just had some fun playing with the sky. I did some clouds, I did some um, blending. I, I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to do because I couldn't really see too much of what was going on in the sky and then I ended up just kind of making it very um just very muted and blurred out again at the end but it was just kind of fun to play oh and if you'd like some more tutorials on landscape painting my landscape my watercolor landscape workshop course is 40% off this month and or in uh, honor of plain April so I will put a link down to that with a coupon code if you want to check that out and save some money but it's basically a beginner introduction to painting landscapes in watercolor if you'd find that interesting um, I'll put that for you and if not then um, no worries just continue watching the time lapse and seeing how this painting goes together. So one of the things I've been doing during plain April, because it's too cold to paint outside every day here in Maine, and honestly, I don't have... Um I don't have the space and the time to do that a lot is I've been taking a lot of photos while I'm out with my dog walking and I love this little um, it's kind of like the inlet to the snowmobile trail down near the baseball field where I let my dog run and there's this pile of rocks I've painted this pile of rocks before um, actually on location and I liked it from this angle I like the way the light was I like how the kind of the um, mid-ground area is lit up behind the trees and I want to play with that lighting scenario and so I snapped a picture I thought it was kind of interesting and I think I'll probably use this reference photo again maybe on a larger painting maybe with brush -o or elegant writer or something I think it has some really neat lines and shapes and that's what I'm looking for when I take a reference photo because you, know, you could look at this and say gee it's it's very similar in color it's not very vibrant you know the leaves aren't even out it's just kind of blah but when you look at other aspects like um, how's the light hitting how would the value range do I have a nice variety of values do I have some a nice variety of shapes and marks and is the light coming in, in an interesting way when you look at scenes like that um, you can kind of determine whether you'll be able to make a decent painting out of it and uh, take a lot of photos I would say if you're looking to paint more from life um, in addition to actually sketching on location take photos when something strikes you as oh that's interesting I don't have paint, time to paint it now because maybe you're walking the dog or it's just too cold or you don't have your supplies with you um, take photos and work from them now there I ex I exaggerated that curve of that tree and um, and I think there was there was a curve in the tree and also where I cropped the photo was right where a branch was starting I think and then there might have even been some distortion from my camera I took it with my cell phone um, which I find does not distort as much as like um, a regular camera can sometimes it tends to kind of flatten things out a little bit but anyway uh, I had that serious distortion going on there but I did end up straightening the tree out a little bit just by filling in a bit on the right side and you know I did take pains to make sure that my my paper was cropped at the same aspect ratio as my photo but I did have the tree in a little bit too far there so um, and then I ended up taking up more of the space with the tree line and not leaving as much space for the rock so uh, I probably could have I probably should have just moved my tape down a bit and just extended my painting a little bit but I didn't think of it at the, as a time and because I'm using gouache and gouache is so opaque I did end up painting over the tape in some areas and not realizing it and actually you know what now that I'm looking at it I think some of that paint on the um, I guess I did keep the trees in the right that tree in the right place because I'm thinking I painted over the tape a bit which makes me feel like I have a wider canvas than I do um, so that's just one thing you have to think about when you're using gouache paint now this plaid washi tape does 
stand out more than like a white masking tape so that does kind of keep me in the boundaries a little bit better i hope it's not too distracting i'm honestly i'm trying to use up a bunch of my washi tape because i have tons of it and it doesn't last forever so um like if I'm not going to use this on a project, uh, and washi tape does not stick super strongly, so like I might as well use it up in my you know sketchbook work because otherwise it's going to just get either stuck together in a big blob or it's going to lose its adhesive and I'm not going to be able to use it anyway. So um, that was one of those things that I bought too much of when I was excited and did not fully comprehend how quickly I could use it up before it went bad. So a little word to the wise there with washi tape. Don't over consume it because it's not gonna, it's not one of those really long shelf life products. Uh, I've been pretty lucky with my tape because it's stored in a cool basement that I haven't had too much go bad, but I have had those rolls where it's like, oh, I'm never getting the end unstuck. Sometimes I'll heat it up with a heat tool and that will help. But if you're going to throw that in your bag and take it planar painting with you, you're not going to have a heat tool with you. So, you know, just kind of keep that in mind. And I'm not going to waste, um, you know, hours of my time trying to get the end unstuck. If it's just not working, then I will. I will sadly uh, chuck it, but... Yeah, just something to know for the future. Don't don't overbuy that product. Don't overbuy tape in general. Um, I will generally buy a few rolls of masking tape at a time. Honestly, the masking tape I like the best for painting comes from the Dollar Tree. I just find that the level of stickiness is perfect. It's more of a painter's tape than a dolly than a masking tape, even though it looks like a masking tape. And so I'll buy that uh, and put it in my teaching bag and then I'll use that batch up and then I'll buy another batch. I just bought a new batch for um, for classes because I had used up pretty much everything. Finishing And you finish all the tails, finish all the tape at about the same time. Now, if you're not teaching classes, you don't need to have multiple rolls going. But since I do teach, I want to have at least like six rolls so I can scatter them on tables and nobody's waiting too long to tape their paper down. Um, you know, you've got to kind of pace out your classes and make sure that you don't have people A, waiting around too much or B, sitting there bored or struggling to keep up. It's a, it's kind of a balance that you need to, you know, to get a, a handle on. Now here I've decided to mix some black into some of the uh, mixes that I made. This, this actually, this mixing set mixed really well. Um, so, so far I'm impressed. This is the first I've used it. I haven't swatched out the paint or anything. I just want to jump in and use it. This is the Windsor Newton set of six, the mixing set. And I was able to make a great brown with the three primary colors. Um, the green is super bright, so it does need to be, um, it does need to be tinted with other colors and it uses a zinc white which is kind of nice because it doesn't overtake any of the other colors it's definitely a mixing white and I don't really have a lot of experience with zinc white gouache I like how it's a little bit warmer in tone and uh and I feel like my highlights I, I only use zinc white and I felt like my highlights were white enough so it does seem to be opaque enough for the to do the job um so I'm going to enjoy experimenting with that more. I honestly think this set here is going to go well with some of the Da Vinci gouache that I bought um, open stock because, you know, I've got some browns and some warm yellows, yellow ochres, that sort of thing. Uh, so I think it'll be a nice a nice uh, companion piece to that. I'm going in, and I'm, I, I don't know if I use straight white at all in this, maybe towards the very, very, very end. But for the most part, um, I'm mixing it with things so I don't get too boldly bright as you can see there's no like super bright highlights in my reference although I do tend to push my values a bit in my painting because I want it to be eye-catching and I and I mean the the photo probably wouldn't catch anybody's eye when and I don't think anyone would look at that photo and be like "Ooh, I want to paint that um so I do want to do some things to make it spark a little bit more make it show up a little bit more as, as interesting I made some kind of mossy dark green color to show like the the lichen that was on the rocks which were a very very dark green and um yeah I'm just trying to add some interest since the rocks are the focal point of the painting I want to make sure that they stand out now I did a um I'm going to do a speckling technique on that and I wish I did that before I added the uh <clears throat> the highlights here because then I have to go back in and add them again and I feel like it would have looked a lot more natural if I had that on earlier and then did a kind of a transparent highlight. But I kind of had the idea to do the speckling on it afterwards. So I'm just taking a scrap of paper and just cutting some kind of rock shaped masks out of it so I can um, get a little bit of toothbrush speckle there. And you can aim the toothbrush pretty good when you are speckling. I find it actually works better than fancy store-bought speckling tools. You just, you know, I would just save the toothbrushes when they were going to, when they were getting all used, like all worn out, toss them in the dishwasher, uh, sanitize them, and then I would use them for painting. Um, you know, some people don't like that, but you could go buy a new toothbrush at the Dollar Tree if you don't like that. You know, I'm going to recycle the old ones. 
you do you. You can soak them in some bleach if you need to. I mean, I'm not like, I guess I'm not as like icked out as other people are over germs. Um, but I did make sure they were clean and I've used those for years. So if there were any germs on them, they have long since gone dormant, I guess. Uh, so I'm giving it a quick dry because I want to remove the tape and, um, well, eventually, yeah, here we go. We're removing the tape. Isn't that satisfying? Uh, when you, you don't want to take tape off of wet paper because that's going to make it tear. You also, if your tape is kind of stubborn by heating it with a heat tool or a hairdryer will help it loosen up a little bit. So now I'm evaluating. And now that I see the white borders, I can tell, do I need darker darks? Do I need brighter highlights? Um, I find this is very... Uh, it's very nice to do at this stage. And if you're happy with the way it is, then great. Um, then that's great. And if you're not, then you can go ahead and add more highlights in at this point. I decided I liked it just the way it was. So I'm going to call it done. And there you can see the finished product. Now I will put a link to the critique club lesson. If you want to go check that out as well as the discount code for 40% off my watercolor landscape workshop. If that is more up your alley. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up before you go until next time. Happy crafting. Bye.